Thank you again to our nominees. Let me now recognize the ranking member, Senator Wicker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today we're here to consider two positions that are um, among those important in the Department of Defense. I want to welcome you, Ms. Amber Crombie, as well as your family. I also welcome Mr. Cholet and your wife and children. Glad to have you here today. It's um, worth setting some context as we begin this hearing. Recently, the Marine Corps Commandant, General Eric Smith, noted that our country is <clears throat> in something of an interwar period. He's right, and if we continue our current course, we risk transforming this moment from an interwar period to a pre-war period. I think we need to act and act quickly to prevent a war. As we face a growing threat from communist China, we need to pursue a policy of peace through strength. Strength. Unfortunately, when it comes to addressing our deterrence gaps, the current administration demonstrates a lack of urgency. It was President George H.W. Bush who said, when it comes to national defense, finishing second means finishing last. I agree with the former president, and right now we are finishing last when it comes to the military balance in the Western Pacific. So we must act quickly. Ms. Abercrombie, you have been nominated to the post of Assistant Secretary of Defense for Acquisition. You've had decades of experience in the Pentagon to prepare yourself for this position. I hope I can receive your commitment to work together to accelerate many of our most important procurement programs. For example, we need to work together on Harpoon anti-ship missiles. So let's talk about that. Mr. Cholet, you've been nominated to serve as Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, the third ranking position in the department. You will advise the Secretary on some of our most sensitive national defense matters, and you will apprise Congress of the department's work. Mr. Cholet, the recent Undersecretary of Defense for Policy recently deflected House and Senate oversight efforts, made partisan comments unbecoming of his station, and demonstrated low regard for the authorities under the Constitution of the legislative branch. Many of his patterns of conduct were foreseeable given his public record. The Senate Republican Conference subsequently voted against his confirmation. Members on my side of the aisle have many questions still unanswered from his tenure. Mr. Cholet, I would like you to articulate what you understand your relationship with Congress ought to be and how you intend to repair the degraded relations with Congress, particularly on this side of the aisle. The important post to which you've been nominated requires someone with discretion and sound professional judgment. Mr. Cholet, you exhibit an indisputably impressive record of public service. Yet, I need to note that you've also made several comments in the past that caused me some concern, and I hope you can clarify them for me today. You have trivialized the situation on our southern border. You've claimed that the institutional military is infected by systemic racism, and you've suggested that our decision to leave Afghanistan was strategically sound, and these are just some of the disturbing comments. As this process moves forward, senators are going to have to consider whether these views are appropriate. Many senior general and flag officers have told this committee, we are in the most dangerous moment since World War II. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss these comments with you in more detail and receive a full accounting of your views and qualifications. But for now, thank you both for being here, and we look forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Worker. Uh, Mr. Cholet, you're recognized for your opening statement. Well, thank you, Chairman Reed and Could Ranking Member Could you bring Member that Wicker. microphone as close